I guess they didn't finish up the dishes yesterday. I guess that was leftover from last night. I don't, I walked into it, so. But I made a note to myself, I'm gonna to talk to the instructor that left that. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good morning, how are y'all? Can y'all hear me? Good morning, do y'all hear me? Hello? I can hear you, Chef. Can y'all hear me now? Yes, sir. All right, great. Thanks. I don't have any speaker issues. Guys, I'm gonna uh, gather. I need to gather up more stuff. Uh, I'll we'll start in about five or six minutes. I'm gonna gather up uh, some more stuff and then we'll get started.
Good morning. We'll get started in just a few minutes, okay? Getting my stuff together. Um, you know what? You can just put them underneath the, there. Uh, that's where I threw them yesterday. I just put them underneath. And sorry about the mess. I'm gonna I'm gonna find out who did it, and we're gonna get that resolved. All right, so today, oh, hey, oh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So today we are going to be doing uh, barbecue. So um, let's talk about what, what needs to happen first. We've got chicken, we've got ribs, we've got barbecue sauce, we have beans um, and coleslaw. I do not have anything, uh, any pickles or cucumbers, but I'm gonna, uh, uh, since we're in Mexico uh, tomorrow and the next day, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a pickle of, uh, we're gonna pickle some jalapenos. So uh, we can use those pickled jalapenos for Mexico and we're not losing the uh, uh, not, so we're going to be able to still do it, but I was going to use it for Mexico instead of barbecue. But if you would like to do the pickles for the barbecue, that's totally fine. I, I am not just because I don't have any cucumbers, uh, so I'm going to be doing the jalapenos and I'll just use those for Mexico. So that's kind of what, uh, what we're going to be doing. And then... Um, and then we've got white bread or rolls, if you would like to do that. And then we have coleslaw as well. Um, so the, the very first thing that I did when I first got into, uh, into work was uh, I lit the, uh, the smoker, uh, started the smoker. And I'm going to have to check that in a few minutes, but I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to log in to my phone and show you all kind of what, what it looks like and uh, kind of do it from that way. So I'm going to log in and uh, my phone real quick. And then I'm going to log in to All right, there we go. So I'm going to go outside. I'll be back when you start. So I'm going to go out to the pit. I'm sorry. Go out to the pit and show y'all what I've got so far. A 
little dark out here. Sorry. So I have three logs. Kind of did it um, kind of almost like what how uh, Franklin, uh, what I showed y'all on the uh, on that uh, master class show. I put the two logs uh, on the side. I've got the other uh, kind of main log in the middle. So when those two smaller logs fall off or uh, kind of break down, that big log kind of goes in and that creates a good coal base uh, for us. So it, this is way too hot to be uh, smoking or to, you know, plus there's a lot of uh, fire. We don't want fire. We want kind of heat, but we don't want actual fire. Um, so I'm going to have to let that sit for a little bit and kind of uh, go down before I can actually uh, throw on any, put on anything in the, uh, on the pit. Now, uh, the, uh, that I'm probably not going to be able to get my my product done in time. I'm I'm hoping, but uh, depending on how fast this uh, gets gets ready, depends on how uh, how fast I can get that uh, product uh, cooked. So uh, anyway, I've got this going. I'm going to come check it in maybe about uh, 20 minutes or so. And then uh, hopefully kind of close up the, the damper and start to get it ready for, uh, for us to cook our food. So that is that. Uh, any questions so far of what I showed you? Eating game right now for the pit to get ready. Now, hey, uh, the one thing I do want to say is today I'm going to let y'all out a little early. Uh, my second COVID uh, vaccination was supposed to be last week uh, with the snow and all the ice. I am getting my second vaccination today and it has and it's at uh, 11 o'clock. So I'm going to be letting y'all out a little early today. Uh, just to let y'all know. Sorry for the inconvenience. It's just with the weather uh, and all of that, my second vaccination got canceled until today. So, um, Okay, so I've got my kit going. So there, there's a couple of things that need to get going first. We need to start cooking the beans. Uh, the beans are gonna take a little while to cook, right? So we, I've already soaked them. I soaked them yesterday, uh, showed you uh, me soaking them. I'm gonna now, here are my beans right here in the pot. I dumped out the water and I'm gonna get another pot and I'm going to start to cook it. So let me grab a pot real quick. So I'm going to get my beans. And I just looked up a barbecue uh, bean recipe. Um, and just going to because we will give you the freedom to decide what kind of, how, however you want to season the beans. But I'm gonna uh, fill it up with water. This is a chicken stock, this is uh, what, whatever you want, but you know that if you put, uh, if you put salt in your beans uh, early, it's going to, they're, 
it's going to still be rock hard. So I, I just have water on the heat, just sitting there ready to go. All right. Uh, All right, so I've got my beans going uh, and I've got my seasoning up. I'll season those beans up in a little bit, but um, I just need to go ahead uh, and start cooking the beans. I, what I can do is in the beans, I can, uh, I will cook off some onions and garlic and all of that, but I'll do that in a, in a little bit, uh, but I just need to get those beans started cooking. All right, so beans are cooking, the pit is on and, and going, it's not ready yet. Um, I need to get my stuff for coleslaw. So I'm gonna go get, go get my stuff for the coleslaw. And, uh, and also you need to marinate or rub down your, here's your ribs right here. I'll, I'll actually show you how to fabricate the ribs before we, do uh, okay. Here is a rack of ribs right here. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to pull the membrane off of that rib. Okay, so here's the rack of ribs right here, right? And on the back side, on the bone side, um, there is a membrane that I'm gonna kind of scrape like that. I'm gonna get a paper towel. That membrane with that paper towel. And kind of pull this membrane off and I'll show you. You can kind of see that little membrane right there. So I'm gonna take this and just pull and it ripped. So I've got to, but you can kind of see, let me see if I can show you the difference of, here's the membrane that has been taken off. The membrane that is left is right here. It tends to, if that membrane stays on, what's gonna happen is, is those ribs will start to curl up when you cook it. And, and that curling up is not gonna be an even cooking and it won't be evenly cooked. So we're gonna take this. And I am recording, so we'll have the recording today. And you just take that and you can kind of see that membrane right here. Very important that you take that off because it just gets really tough. You can kind of see how it just pulls right off. Any questions on that? No, yes? All right. So I've got... And I'm going to season this. Uh, however, in, in the seasoning is whatever turns you on, whatever excites you. But if it's just try to stick with whatever region, if you're going with uh, Kansas City or if you're going with Alabama, or if you're going to Texas, or if you're going whatever barbecue place you're going for, just make sure you stick with 
whatever the spices and all the the things that they typically use. So um, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna get. I got some granulated onion, granulated garlic, some chili powder, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, cayenne if I wanted. Uh, I'm gonna get a little brown sugar um, as well. Get a little sweetness. Um, some some people like to rub it with a little bit of vinegar as well. I'm gonna go get my brown sugar. Some salt, some pepper, and then you can let it sit and kind of uh, kind of marinate in. And get some granulated garlic, granulated onion. Rubbing it down, get, get a good coat on there. Get some salt, some pepper. You can put it in a bowl. Uh, I'm just leaving it out on my cutting board just so you can see it a little bit better than me putting it in a bowl or something like that. Sugar. Get your hands dirty a little bit, kind of rub it all around in. Questions about the, I've got the ribs going, I've got, or uh, about to rub down. I just need to get the salt. Thank you. 
beans. I just walked back in the room, saw my beans over going a little bit, so I've got to be careful with that. Bring up pepper real quick. Um, are we making a sauce for this? Yeah, barbecue sauce, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Asked about the, the barbecue sauce. So, one thing that you can make whatever barbecue sauce you want, you can make uh, uh, Carolina, you name it, whatever kind of barbecue sauce that turns you on. Grinding up some black pepper real quick. So my beans are going still. So I'm gonna rub this with the pepper, get some salt on there, and then you can just let it sit for a few minutes, and then we will cook this in a little bit. All right, so what I usually do is I, you know, either put it in a Ziploc, put it in, I, uh, put it somewhere so where it just it'll just sit and kind of uh, the moisture will start to pull out and it will be kind of a little gummier, stickier. Um, so my ribs are rubbed down. Thank you. All right, so my ribs are rubbed down right now. I've got uh, my beans cooking just in stock or water or some sort of liquid. Uh, I would suggest, uh, you know, you could put, you know, uh, a little bit of beer in there. Uh, like a, a, a beer works really well when you're cooking beans. Hold on a sec, just cleaning the station. I'm gonna run out in, in a few minutes, check on my fire, but I'm gonna get, so I 
I've got my ribs done. So let me share. So I've got, we've got uh, the ribs done or at least rubbed down and sitting there. I've got my beans starting cooking. I need to work on barbecue sauce. I also need to uh, marinate our brine or uh, I would say, you know, we, we can, I can, I will let you kind of do whatever you would like, but uh, you can marinate your chicken uh, in whatever you would like. I have basically, uh, I've got my chicken. I'm going to just uh, put it, I'm going to make a brine. And a brine um, is basically water. And uh, we're going to use about, if you're, do y'all have a whole chicken or what, what how much chicken do y'all y'all have for this? Is it a half chicken? It's um, they told us to buy a full chicken. Okay, but just remember that that full chicken. If you uh, you if you cook that, we still need. Uh, we're going to be using that ha other half of chicken for for the, tamales, uh, right? Tamales, yeah. So yeah. either cut your chicken in half or cook the whole chicken the way it is, and then you can use it for you know pull it for tamales. But the only problem is we will not have. Uh, that that liquid, uh, like that stock, and that's something we need to deal with today as well. Uh, but uh, I would say don't don't forget if you use a whole chicken, you need to save half of it for uh, for tomorrow uh, or for the tamales, whenever that is. Um, okay, sounds good. So we're going to rub down or season your chicken. Um, a brine, if you want to make a brine, it is basically for a half a chicken, I would say use uh, a cup or about two cups of water, about an ounce of sugar and about a half ounce of, uh, of salt. And then whatever spices you so desire. You want uh, garlic, uh, onions, whatever. You put it all into a pot and you heat it up and you let it sit and cool. And then you can, um, then you put your chicken. Okay. And this is kind of, I've got a chicken sitting in basically sugar, water, uh, and, and uh, sugar, water, salt. And I had some uh, spices in there uh, that I, I strained out, but this is basically sugar, water, uh, and it's about an ounce of sugar. Uh, I'm sorry, half ounce of sugar, half ounce of uh, salt. I think I said a, an ounce, but I meant to say a half ounce of each. And you just let it sit in, in that sugar, water, salt, mixture for a, for a little bit um you know an hour are you are hours. you doing the same brine are you doing the same brine for the ribs um no uh the bright the, the ribs i did a kind of a a, a regular rub oh, the rub okay I, I did a rub and then for the chicken i'm going to do a brine you know and i'll make that So I will do the brine first. So I'm going to get a cup of water. Actually, I'm going to do a cup of water. All right, so I've got plain cup of water in this pot right here. I'm going to put in basically an ounce or a half ounce of salt and a half ounce of sugar. And if you've ever had a, uh, um, a barbecue chicken, uh, ever at a barbecue place, um, 
it, that barbie or the chicken kind of has a, a pinkish color to it or a kind of a pinkish look. Uh, that is from the brine. And plus, again, like I was talking before, the uh, one of, uh, your, your chicken can overcook really easily on the pit. So that's why we use a brine to keep it moist. Okay, so I've got a cup of water, ounce, half ounce of salt, and half ounce of sugar. Uh, you can use brown sugar, you can use whatever else. You know, I've got, let's say I've got some, here's some granulated garlic I can put in there, granulated onion, um, maybe some black pepper in here. And I'm gonna let that come up to a simmer. And then I'm gonna, uh, after it comes up to a simmer, I'm gonna turn it off. And then I'm gonna let it sit and kind of get a little cool. Sometimes what I usually do is, you know, I, I will put in a cup of water and then I'll put in maybe a half a cup of ice into it whenever it's done so it'll cool off. So then I can put it in my chicken without over without cooking my chicken. Does that kind of make sense? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get a cutting board and I'm gonna cut my chicken in half to where I can have the, the other half for my tamales for tomorrow or the next day. So there is my bird right there. Take my knife and I'm gonna just cut right in between the breast bone. Splitting it right down the middle there. Okay. Um, there's a few pin feathers in here. Took those out. Um, for the wing, I like to pull the wing back a little bit, just like so. Because that little wing tip tends to burn. And if you kind of pull it back, it kind of kicks it off to the side so where it doesn't uh, tend to burn on you. So this one half goes, uh, and I'll save half of it for tamales. The rest I'm going to put in a bag and I'm going to brine it. So I will put this in a Ziploc bag. I just need to wash my hands and grab a Ziploc bag. Please be very careful. This uh, chicken, I would say, uh, if it's uh, chicken has. 9% chance of uh, having salmonella. So uh, you always want to be very careful with your chicken or with whatever you're doing. So I'm going to get a Ziploc bag. I'll put, put that half a chicken, a half chicken, put it right in the Ziploc bag. I'm gonna go ahead and get my station thing since it has a little cooking in here. Um, and I'm gonna make sure that I, I clean my knife, I need to sanitize my knife, all of that good stuff, because you do not want to get anybody sick. Especially now, you know, if uh, you know, with COVID happening and all of that. You don't want to, uh, you could potentially hurt someone pretty bad. Not All right, so um, my brine is coming up to a simmer. And my, let's see if I can. Are we making um, white bread also? Um, yeah, yes, but I don't know if, uh, the, I don't think the school, I mean, you don't have to because I don't think I'm going to because 
I don't think we have yeast today. I was searching around. I'm not doing it. You do not. So I'm going to see if I can So here's my brine right there. And and right when that comes up to the simmer, then I'm going to take it off the heat. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to take it off the heat. And then I'll put some ice in there. And then after I put it off there, I'll put this brine. In the uh, in the Ziploc bag with my half chicken. I might not need all that uh, all of that chick all, all that brine, but at least I've got it just in case. All right. So uh, my beans are come up to simmer. I need to manage that. My brine just came up. I'm gonna take it off the heat right now. I'm going to go get some ice and then I'm going to uh, go outside. So as of right now, I have I have the beans cooking. I've got my ribs already rubbed down. My chicken is about to be brined right here. There's my chicken and my brine. You can see the ice in there. I'm gonna just kind of stir that around, make sure it kind of cools off. I will pour the chicken brine into the chicken when I get back from going to check outside. So, uh, so I've gotten the chicken marinated, the ribs rubbed down, the beans going. I'm gonna need to make the barbecue sauce and then I need to make the coleslaw. And then if I can find, uh, oh, and I'm gonna make, uh, the pickled, um, but I'm going to pickle the jalapenos to where we can have pickled jalapenos for uh, the following uh, day. All right, so I will get on to my phone and show you all the pit. So I'm going to go out to the pit.
All right, so we am back. So let's see, my brine has cooled down. I can go ahead. I'm going to pour it. My chicken right here. Can I see that? I got my brine right in. There's my chicken brine. Now, the rest of it, you can save um, whatever else, but you know, I, I would much rather have too much uh, brine. It's just basically sugar and water and salt uh, and some spices, but it, it's easier to have too much than too little. Um, so I've got my chicken brine. Okay, so, and I've got my other piece of chicken right here, my half a chicken that I'm going to save. I'm going to put off to the side and I'm going to be uh, getting ready to kind of cook that in a little bit uh, for the tamale. So I've got my chicken in a brine sitting over here. I got my ribs rubbed down uh, really well. And here, getting kind of nice and tacky. Uh, tacky looking uh, because the moisture is kind of coming out of it. Uh, I'm going to clean up my station. Hold on. Now, for my beans, what I'm going to do is I'm cooking my beans kind of uh, by itself over here in a saute pan. I'm going to kind of start cooking up some garlic, some onions in a little while. And, and that's kind of what, what I'm gonna mix in with my beans. Um, so I've got my beans. I, I do need to go get my uh, cabbage so I can uh, make my coleslaw. So I'm gonna go get that real quick. Wrap that. And I'm gonna put up my chicken so where it's not sitting in room temperature. Because again,
What degrees should we put it in the oven at? Could you say that one more time? What what degree should we put it the uh, ribs in the oven for? Um, I would say uh, uh, I would say two seventy five or actually around three hundred. Uh, yeah, three twenty five, three hundred until uh, dinner. And then um, you can kind of glaze it so it'll get that kind of nice glaze or that look to it. So I'm going to cut the cabbage for my coleslaw. I'm going to cut the root end out. And coleslaw, you want it kind of thin. So I will get a bowl for that. Put the cabbage in there. Now I'm going to work on making the Dressing for it. So I've got, so right now I have my chicken brining or marinating, whatever. If you want to use a brine, if you want to marinate it with, I don't know, uh, what, whatever liquid marinade you would like, uh, that's totally fine. Uh, so I've got those two going. I've got my beans cooking. Uh, I cut my coleslaw. I need to make my mayonnaise uh, for the coleslaw, and then I need to mix the coleslaw mayonnaise or my dressing that is made for the coleslaw. I'm kind of mix it all in, and the and the dressing for the coleslaw is going to be basically mayonnaise, some sort of vinegar. I don't care what kind. Uh, or actually, I don't want like sherry vinegar. I don't want uh, malt vinegar, uh, but you could use red wine vinegar, you can use white wine vinegar, you can use uh, apple cider, you can use rice wine vinegar. Rice wine will be a little sweeter, but uh, you, you could do any of that, uh, and that's totally fine. Um, so I'm going to get all my stuff that I need for mayonnaise. I need to go get me an egg out of the refrigerator and some oil. Egg oil and a little Dijon. Dijon helps 
uh, or uh, emulsion um, um, to where it'll stay emulsified. I'm going to get a bowl and a whisk. Crack my egg. I only want an egg yolk. You in in this egg? I don't know if you can see, but the chalouse, the little uh, white part. Oh, sorry, the chalouse, this little white part right here. I do want to try to try to take that off. To wash my hands since I separated the egg. I also need to think about how long my ribs are going to take. And it's almost seven o'clock. I probably need to get my ribs going shortly. Uh, a little touch of Dijon goes in right here. Get a little vinegar, just a touch, or you could use lemon juice. Attract it, the yolk is right here. Now I'm gonna start putting in the oil. Now, the issue with when you put in the oil, you need to go very slow at first, very slow, because if not, it will uh, be very hard, or it will break or separate. So I'm gonna got my oil right here. I'm a southpaw. I'm a lefty, so I'm gonna put in my oil with my right hand, and and I'm gonna slowly. Start putting that oil in. The slower you need to go, slow it first. And what I usually do is I try to use my belly to hold the bowl. You can start to see it's starting to kind of get a little thicker. But the very first part. The first emulsion is the most important thing. You can do this in a mixer. I've seen it done in a mixer, I've seen it done in a Robofu, I've seen it done by hand. You know, really kind of even a, uh, a hand mixer. You start to see starting to kind of thicken up. At, once it kind of thickens up, then you can go with your oil a little bit faster. But until then, you don't want to go too fast. And you start to see it's starting to get thicker. And it's starting to light up. Now, uh, if it gets too thick, I would much rather it kind of be too thick a little bit because of um, um, when you put it with the cabbage, the cabbage leaches out, right? You know, a lot of moisture comes from the cabbage here. You can start, uh, you can start to see how thick that mayonnaise is. And I'm gonna put some salt. Now, the problem with the salt, when you put salt in, in egg yolk and oil, um, the, 
problem is, is the, the salt doesn't dissolve in oil. So you, you leave salt bombs. So what, what is important is I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this in just a second and to help kind of alleviate that. But you can see how thick that mayonnaise is, right? Uh, it's staying right on my uh, wire whip. But I'm gonna add just, yeah, and you can see now, I mean, it's pretty thick. Plus, I'm going to be adding vinegar in, in with this. So you want you sometimes want a thicker uh, mayonnaise, especially when it comes to making uh, coleslaw. You can see it's sticking, uh, sticking to my wire whip. That tells me it's nice and thick, nice and good. But I am going to put a skosh or just a little drop or two of water to where I can uh, sit. It'll thin it down just a little bit, but it'll also allow it kind of lightens it up. I don't know if you saw, but it lightens it up to where it's less kind of uh, egg looking color. Kind of start to see, looks like more mayonnaise like. Plus, that water in there helps dissolve my sugar, I mean, my salt. There we go. There is the mayonnaise right there. All right? Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Egg yolk, Dijon oil. Uh, that is it. So we've got our mayonnaise right there. Um, and so this for uh, coleslaw, you typically want like uh, some sort of acid, some sort of vinegar, uh, whatever vinegar that floats your boat. I'm gonna go get some apple cider vinegar that I'm gonna put in there. You also need sugar, uh, adds a little sweetness but also the sugar is there to counterbalance the bitterness from the cabbage. Because the cabbage has got some bitterness to it and this helps counterbalance that bitterness. So once this is done, I'm gonna go out and check on the pit and make sure that the pit's good and then um, probably put on my rib at that particular time. Uh, I will wait on the chicken because uh, the chicken doesn't take as long than, than the rib. So I just want to make sure that I take care of that. I'm going to put actually in my mayonnaise, I'm going to put some granulated garlic, maybe some granulated onion, uh, some black pepper, some salt, and um, some sugar. And then I will get the, uh, the vinegar in there. I've got a little bit of sugar I just put in. Uh, celery salt, celery seed. Uh, you, you sometimes see that in, in, uh, in cabbage. Actually, I'm gonna just use regular, well, let me see if I can just find some other vinegar. So that kind of tells me that 
my uh, the, the pitch is getting close to uh, where I need it. I'm going to put in a little apple cider vinegar to, and that thins it down. Everybody kind of see, and it's still pretty thick, as you can see, but it's thinned down a little bit, and I, I would like it a little thicker because as it sits in the cabbage, the moisture is going to kind of come out, and it's going to be a, a lot more wet. So I'm going to go ahead, take my mixture, mix it all up, and here, make sure I'm going to put just a skosh more vinegar. Hair bit thick. So I've got my cabbage now fitting in it, and I'm going to stir it every once in a while because. I want to make sure it, it gets all mixed together. Now you can put carrots, you can put, you know, whatever kind of uh, things you want. If you want to put carrots, you uh, either grade them. If you grade them, make sure you squeeze it out, squeeze out any of the juice. Um, my, since I'm making it uh, and I'm going to bring this home, um, my wife is allergic to carotene, so, uh, so I am leaving out the carrots and I'm going to serve it to my wife. Um, so that is my cabbage right here. I'm going to just wrap this up with plastic wrap in just a second, and then I will put that in the refrigerator for whenever I need it. Uh, yes, sir. Please. Just throw it right in there. Thank you. So my cabbage right here, or my coleslaw right there. I'm going to just put that in the fridge. So my cabbage, this I'm going to take, uh, bring it and put it in the cooler. And then I've got my ribs right here. I'm going to take those guys and bring that out to the pit and hopefully the pit. So I'm going to head out to the pit. Let me drop off my coleslaw into the cooler. Coleslaw is in the cooler. Now, I don't know if you can see or if my camera can go that far, but it is. Um, the smoke is kind of coming up white and that's kind of what you want. You don't want any black smoke coming out. Uh, if it's black, it, it is not the best smoke. Uh, you want a nice kind of white or grayish smoke coming out and you can kind of see it's starting to come out. Looking good. I'm gonna go look at the pit, see see where it's at, and adjust the wood a little bit. Nice, good coal base. I'm gonna throw another log 
on and then kind of try to get it a little hotter. All right, I'm gonna open up the pit and I'm, I've got to get my phone or get my webs out. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put the fat side down first. go. I was gonna ask there is to my ribs right that. there. I'm gonna close it up. And I'm gonna head back inside. Station real quick. I'm going to check on my beans. I've been uh, neglecting my beans for a while. Uh, so I need to make sure that my beans are good and getting cooked. And then I'm going to have to kind of season it and make, make a good, make them kind of all good flavoring of the beans. And then I need to make my barbecue sauce. My beans are cooked. Okay, they're cooked. They're done. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna just kind of take it off the heat for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna start kind of seasoning it up and getting them to where they're kind of more of a, you know, barbecue bean kind of a. Uh, I'm gonna put a little chili powder in there, a little bit of black pepper. Garlic, granulated garlic, granulated onion. Some vinegar, salt for sure. So well, I've got vinegar, salt, uh, granulated garlic. Um, oh God, these beans are smelling good. I'm gonna put in, I like to put in just a skosh of molasses. It gives a little sweetness and it gives a little darkness, uh, kind of darkens it up a little bit. Kind of gives a nice little flavor. So, uh, here, you can see my beans right here. 
I'm going to just now kind of cook it down slowly uh, and kind of reduce this liquid to where because that bean liquid or the beans are very starchy, right? And that bean liquid will thicken it up as it kind of cooks. So I'm going to let that sit and kind of cook down a little bit. Uh, if you want to add a little bit of uh, uh, ketchup to it, uh, that also kind of like uh, Boston baked beans kind of a deal. Um, if you are wanting something like that. So questions about what I've done so far or what we've gotten done so far. We've marinated the chicken. We've uh, marinated the ribs and put the ribs on already. I've got my beans almost done. I'm just seasoned them and I'm going to finish the cooking uh, with all the seasoning in it. I've got my coleslaw, so I made my mayonnaise. I uh, then made my coleslaw. My coleslaw is kind of sitting idle, waiting for me. I'll stir it and uh, make sure it's all seasoned properly. And then uh, I'm going to be needing to make the barbecue sauce, and I'm going to make the uh, pickled uh, jalapenos for uh, for the following day uh, that we can use for the next couple of days. Um, but are there any questions so far of what I have done or what we need, what needs to get done so far? Um, I'm assuming that is a no, Chef. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna turn down my beans because I don't want to. Uh, but I've got my beans cooking right there. I'm going to go ahead. I'll wait on everybody else's. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start on my uh, barbecue sauce. So I'm going to use a half an onion. I'm going to small dice this. I don't know if you can hear the sound of my knife. That tells me like how it bangs on the cutting board. It tells me I need to sharpen my knife. It's not sharp. It shouldn't bang like that. It should just slide through really easily. So I'm going to get my barbecue sauce going. I'm going to use this size pan right here. So I'm going to use just a saute pan. Um, I'm going to use the size pot right here. I'm going to turn on the fire.
You can use canola oil, you can use butter, you can use whatever floats your boat, whatever fat. If we had some lard, I could use some lard, whatever else. I'm gonna get some oil and I'm gonna start kind of caramelizing my onions, right? I'm gonna put, actually put, put my onions in when the pan is kind of cold. And because I wanna slowly start to caramelize my onions. I don't want it too high of a heat because I don't want to burn my onions. Uh, because my goal is to get the natural sweetness from the onion to come out. So I'm going to get that going. And I've got for my mise en place, I've got, oh, yes. Um, the reason why you put the, the ribs uh, with the fat down. Upside yes. down, is it because of the smoke will penetrate and more into the meat? Yes, and, and um, I, I, I want to protect the meat side uh, kind of okay. a little bit. So I want to protect the meat side a little bit, but uh, that also will kind of uh, help protect the meat for, for a little bit while I'm getting the uh, temperature uh, kind of uh, dialed in. Okay. Yeah. Great, thank uh, you. So, uh -huh. I, so I got my beans gone, my, my uh, onions are going for my um, barbecue sauce. So I got meat and cloth, I got brown sugar, I've got ketchup, I've got apple cider vinegar, I've got some molasses, some chili powder, granulated garlic, granulated uh, onion, black pepper, and um, that should be about it. And maybe a little bit of mustard. Uh, if I want a little Dijon, uh, maybe a little Worcestershire sauce, if you have it, would be good uh, in there. If you don't have Worcestershire, a little soy, uh, that a little soy might, might be, a, be good if you don't have that. Uh, any of that would be really good. So, I'm gonna, guys, I'm gonna run out real quick and check the, the pit. Uh, I'll be right back.
All right, so guys, I've got my uh, the ribs are looking pretty good. Uh, my beans are going. Barbecue sauce is getting close. Our our my onions are starting to caramelize a little bit. We'll let that just go. Any questions so far? Are we good? All right. I'm going to just keep plugging along. And guys, uh, I will be leaving a little early today just to remind y'all, uh, I've got a, my COVID vaccination was canceled last week and, uh, and I'm going to get my second COVID vaccination today. So, uh, let you know. And it's great, Chef. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm excited. Finally, I don't have to hide, hide out as much in my house. Uh, but just wanted to remind you all of that. Okay, so uh, I'm kind of in a holding pattern right now. So my, my ribs are going. My barbecue sauce is, is working. It's not done. It's not... Uh, anywhere near done just quite yet but um i've got that going i got my beans they're getting close uh being done i've got uh you can kind of see the beans right here i'm just going to reduce this liquid down a little bit more and there are the beans Onions, my onions are cooking. You start to see them browning a little bit. I do want some color, as much color as possible without burning the garlic or without burning the onions. Um, and then I'm going to hit it with ketchup, molasses, uh, chili powder, granulated garlic, pepper, granulated onion maybe a little skosh of brown sugar. Um, if I had, uh, sometimes uh, or I've got apple cider vinegar. Sometimes if you want to add uh, whiskey to it, uh, brandy, you know, I mean, wh whatever, Jack Daniels, you know, I mean, if you're making a, like a Jack Daniels style, um, you know, product, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's a, 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 a kind of barbecue barbecue sauce you want, you can make a, a um, you know, any, any sort of barbecue sauce, if you want a vinegar base or mustard base or wh what have you, uh, it's up to you on that. Right? But, um, I, I love using, you know, using onions and, you know, I'm cooking down some people that are going to need onions in there. This barbecue sauce is going to be a little chunkier, right? Because I've got the onions in there. That or I puree it uh, so where it will um, be nice and smooth. Onions gone, but things got a boom. Just got some color to it. Some color to the onion. I'm gonna crank up the heat. 
I'm going to kind of deglaze in a way with the ketchup. So I'm going to get the ketchup in there. And I don't know if y'all can hear that sound. Uh, you know, I, I love, I mean, this is a good sound that tells me my pan is hot enough. Um, that's what I call the sexy sizzle right there. You kind of see, it's kind of chunky right here. So I got some ketchup in there. I'm going to go ahead get some uh, molasses. And again, this is all by, you're going to have to kind of do it by taste. You know, I, again, you got to kind of balance it out. I'm going to get some granulated garlic. Granulated onion. Powdered onion. Uh, a little chili powder. A lot of black pepper. I've seen people put soy sauce in here. I've seen people put it up. And I don't know if you can see the color of it now. It's nice and dark. that down just a touch. I'm going to get my vinegar uh, in there. Uh, sometimes I like to use apple juice as well. Um, apple juice, white grape juice uh, is good in there also. But I don't know if you can see, but you can see how dark it is right here yes okay i'm going to put a skosh of salt in there because i haven't put any salt uh just like that and i'm going to let that kind of cook down for a little bit and we're going to see where that puts us. so i got my barbecue sauce going i've got my beans going now let me show you my beans Gonna see my beans, they're nice and getting good. Chef, the molasses is what gave the beans that color, right? Um, the molasses in the chili powder? Yes, both. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. and the molasses uh, uh, in the chili powder um, was for this. It's really darkened this up a little bit. Too. Yes. No, now, um, the, this barbecue sauce, I think, it, it's a little thick. I'm going to just add a touch of just plain tap water um, just so where it, I can kind of cook it down without it uh, over reducing. Um, so I'm going to just kind of, I thin it down a little bit. If you wanted to use stock, if you want to use something else, that's totally fine. Whatever puts your boat on that. I've got my let me move my camera back up. Okay, so right now, um, if we look at our, our prep, we've got marinated chicken, uh, rack of ribs. So my chicken's marinating. My ribs are on the smoker. My barbecue sauce is on the fire right now. Uh, my beans are on the fire right now, they're cooking. Uh, and then, I've got my coleslaw already made, and I'm going to uh, work on pickling uh, some jalapenos. Or uh, for you, if you want to pickle whatever, you can pickle whatever. I, I'm going to leave that up to you. If you want whatever kind of pickle stuff you would like to pickle, go for it. As long as you have something pickled 
I, I'm totally down for that. Uh, I just want you to kind of, uh, we're trying to reinforce the pickling uh, method. Uh, and so that's kind of where we're at on that. And I will pickle in just a second after I clean up my station. Uh, and I'm gonna go sit outside the, uh, the ribs for all the other instructions. Um, let's see. I'm going to also. So uh, I'm going to. Wipe down my station, get kind of situated, and then I've got my pickling spice right here. I'm just putting up all my stuff, guys. I'm just kind of cleaning up my station real quick. Getting organized. And again, really kind of depends on where you're at in the world. It depends on how sweet or how spicy your barbecue sauce is. Uh, that's kind of a, kind of a TV show. All right, now I need to go get my jalapenos real quick. And
All right, so I got two jalapenos. I'm gonna just cut them to where I can pickle it. Okay, so there's the jalapeno. I'm gonna go get a pot. Hey, man, how are you today? Good. So I've got cider vinegar. So anybody want to tell me what what goes into uh, making pickle or doing pickling? You've got pickling spice, right? You've got vinegar and a little scotch of sugar, and salt. Why don't, does anybody know why we put sugar in when we pickle items or when we items? It helps to uh, firm up the cell structure of the item. So I've got my jalapeno. I'm going to put it right in and it comes up to the center. I'm going to take it out and let it cool. I can dry it up. I can um, you put it in a jar, a ziplock, whatever floats, or both. You can use white sugar, you can use. All right, so here are my beans. A spoon. You kind of see how it kind of they thickened up. Everybody kind of see that? It looks nice and good. Here's my barbecue sauce right here. It's nice and thick. I'm going to probably get a blender and blend it up so it's nice and smooth so it won't be a chunky barbecue sauce. So I've got now. Let's see what we have. Can we move this back up? So we've gotten our marinated chicken. It's in the it's in the cooler. I've got my ribs in the smoker. My barbecue sauce is on the on the fire right here. I got my beans right here. I've got my pickled jalapenos. Granted, we're not making pickles for today, but the uh, jalapenos are. Uh, I would say, you know, if you want to. Pickle something. So I would like to see something pickled. Uh, it could be carrots, it could be onions, it could be whatever. Uh, it's just the pickling method is what I care about. So whatever you want to pickle, pickle it. Right? Uh, pickle eggs, pickle what, whatever the hell you want to. I'm totally down for whatever you want. Um, and then my coleslaw is in the cooler sitting, and I need to stir that in a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead. And so I, I'm pretty much kind of staged up, right? I mean, other than my white bread that we're not doing because I've got to leave early. Um, but I, I'm going to go ahead about 15 minutes till eight, right? So I'm going to probably go put in my chicken so where my chicken is, is going uh, so where it's not going to, uh, I, I can, since my chicken's been brined, uh, I can easily let it sit in, in warmer. Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Feel free. Feel free. We've got uh, right here, I've got my barbecue sauce there made. Uh, I've got my beans right here. I'm pickling, um, instead of making pickles for the barbecue today, I decided to pickle jalapenos for Mexico for tomorrow and the next day. Uh, so we're, uh, we can have pickled, uh, 
for, for that. And then we brined our chicken uh, sitting in a brine. Uh, and I've got rubbed down my ribs and the ribs are in the smoker. So, and I'm about to put our chicken in the smoker as well. Welcome, thank you. Guys, do I have any questions before I walk outside? You good? All right. Sure. All right, then give me a few minutes. I'm going to walk outside. Uh, I will probably log in on my phone in a few minutes while I'm outside. I'm going to first kind of get, I'm going to be dealing with chicken, so I don't want my hands on my phone. Uh, uh, I will get, show y'all in a few minutes once I get back. Uh, get my hands. So here is my chicken brine, right? So I'm going to take my chicken brine, I'm going to dump it out, and I'm going to kind of get some paper towels and kind of pat it off dry. Then I'm going to season my, my, uh, chicken with salt and pepper. That reminds me, I need to grind up more pepper. And I want to make sure I don't contaminate my salt and pepper. So I'm going to kind of mix a little salt and pepper together. And where I'm not taking my I don't want to throw away any of my salt and pepper. Down. Okay, so guys, I will be right back. I'm going to go put the chicken in and then I'll come back and rinse my hands and then I'll show you all. I'll get on, it, on my phone to show you what it looks like on the set.
So as of right now, As of right now, these are my jalapenos, my beans, barbecue sauce. Okay. I will be right back. Oh, and here is my chicken that I, I rinsed. I rubbed down with salt and pepper, and I'll put it on the grill or on the chicken. I will be right back. All right, so I, I can't tell if you can see this, but here are the ribs right there. And here is my chicken right here. All right, um, so I've got my chicken and ribs sitting right there. Now, the, the one thing that I'm kind of nervous about is the ribs looking a little dried out. So I might need to get a little, I, I kind of rub it down with a little bit of vinegar or you can uh, sometimes uh, spray it down with uh, oil, or, I'm sorry, with apple juice or so something like that. But uh, that is, that's what it's at. So I'm gonna just leave those be for a while. And then I'm gonna go uh, deal with all the rest of the stuff. I'll be back in the, inside in a second. All right, my, my, uh, pickles are pickled, uh, are the, the jalapenos are almost, they're done. I'm going to pull them out. I'm going to let them sit. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you. All right, so my pickle jalapenos are sitting right here. I'll just have them kind of sitting off to the side to cool. Um, I'm gonna get a pastry brush. Uh, if I had a squeeze bottle or like a spray brush or a sprayer, I would spray my uh, ribs with, uh, with vinegar. I'm gonna just brush them with apple cider vinegar. So I'm gonna go out there in just a second and brush that so it doesn't dry out. I'm also get my small blender and puree uh, my Outside, the smoker is looking really good. I see it's starting to smoke up. I put another log on the fire. I, I've got a pan blender, a hand puree. See how it's gotten really thick. I'm gonna fit it down. I can, you can use water. I'm, I'm gonna use water. If you have chicken stock, you can use that. You know, it really kind of depends on who your clientele is. Because, you know, I mean, if you're, you know, whatever flavor you want. And with new puree, it will lighten up the color just a little bit, but uh, you know, I, because it whips in air into it. So where, whenever I heat it back up, it will uh, darken it back up. But here is my barbecue sauce right here. I haven't tasted it yet, but I will. Okay, I know my barbecue sauce for sure needs black pepper. Salt. I'm gonna put just a scotch of vinegar in there as well. And if I wanted to, I could base my uh, base my uh, rib with that uh, with the barbecue sauce. Okay, so now I'm going to place my bowl see where beans are pretty good. I think I just need a squish of salt in there. All right. 
So my beans, my barbecue sauce are done. All I need to do is, is just reheat them or get it, uh, have it set up for um, the finished product. I'm gonna probably go check. Uh, uh, check on my coleslaw and I'm going to taste it and we'll see where I'm at on the coleslaw. And now it's pretty much a waiting game uh, on everything else. It's just kind of waiting, making sure the chicken is done, all of that. I will, I will connect. Actually, let me make sure I have my phone. It doesn't. All right, I will be right back. I'll show you. I will show you what it looks like. I'll be right there. All right, so guys, I'm gonna heading outside to the pit real quick. I've got the other people's ribs that I'm gonna put on. I don't know if you can see the smoke, but it's coming out. It looks white-ish or gray-ish. Maybe a little too much, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look, maybe it, uh, caught on fire a little bit, so I need to check the wood. Oof, temperature went down. So I need to work on the wood a little bit. Try to get that going again. Here my chicken. 
Here's my ribs right there. Put on the other people's ribs. Got my ribs in there, got the chicken in there. And now I'm gonna go get the coleslaw. I will be back in, inside in a few minutes. All right, so I'm back. Uh, hold on. All right, so I'm back and I've got my coleslaw. I'm going to try, see what that tastes like. I for sure need salt. I'm gonna put a little more vinegar in there. And I'm gonna get a little more sugar. It's got a little bit of bitterness to it still. A little more black pepper. So a little bit of everything. Okay, mix that up again, let that sit, and All right, that's good. So I'm just gonna leave that and put that back in the fridge. And I'm gonna go out and baste my ribs with the uh, with the vinegar so it doesn't dry out. 
Are there any questions that I can answer right now? All right, then um, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to paste these ribs and I'll be back.
Guys, I'll be right there. All right. All right, I'm back. Uh, so I've got the ribs, they're going. I've got everything is basically going or done. Um, now we need to think about uh, what, what we're doing tomorrow. So I can kind of maybe get ahead of the game if I need to. So I've got my. Jalapenos right here. Label this. Guys, always when you put stuff in the fridge, especially when it's a commercial fridge, you have to label it. Sauce squared up, ready. Uh, cabbage, the coleslaw is ready. Uh, honestly, all I'm waiting on is the protein, right? The meat uh, and everything else is pretty much done. So I'm going to kind of clean up my station a little bit, get a little more organized for plating up. I'm going to have to go find the plate, uh, get that set up. Now, um, you know, let's say my chicken is not, you know, it's cooked or it, it's almost cooked, but it needs to cook longer. You can always finish the chicken in the, uh, in the oven to finish up the process. Uh, it really kind of depends on what time frame, how long, um, you know, when you need to on and all of that good stuff. You can just put those spoons back over here when you're done. Thank you. Just going to clean up and wipe down my station with sandy water. Since I've been dealing with chicken and spicy stuff, don't want any of that. All right. Now, you need to make sure you post your photos. The way you're going to be able to get graded is if you post your photos 
onto that shared drive. Okay, very important that you post your photos to that shared drive. If not, I have no way of making sure you did it or not. So that's the only way you know how to grade you or only way you can grade, I can grade you. So make sure that gets done. You know, at this point, you know, it's a waiting game, right? So I'm just gonna clean up the station. Because A, I gotta leave early, right? So I, I don't wanna have to, while I'm kind of sitting around, I could be doing something. So that is, just kind of getting, I need to return this coffee grinder that I need to grind up the black pepper. Thanks, man. So let's talk about what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Well, so I can get an idea. Oops. We're going to be in Northern Mexico tomorrow. So Supa de Lima, um, Rosa uh, Verde, so green rice, uh, Supa, uh, and then you got the churros. Um, so We could make the chicken uh, broth today. I'm gonna wait until tomorrow just because uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to leave early and no one's gonna be able to watch it. But if you would like, you can make today with that other half of that chicken that you cut, you could use uh, and make it, make that supa de lima, uh, at least the base for it, right? Um, you, you could do that. And tomorrow's a pretty easy day. You know, we're making a soup, green, basically green rice and, uh, and churros. So, I mean, that's a pretty easy day. I, you know, it's not that much of a product to do. Uh, so, you know, with that being said, that soup and that rice better be darn good because that's all you're doing, right? Soup and rice and the churros. It's only three items. So just make sure that you, you really take care of that soup uh, and, and make, make sure that soup you know, is well seasoned and, and all of that. Um, but you could cook it. What time is it? But uh, so far, that's it. Uh, I'm kind of in a holding pattern. I'm going to uh, put in the attendance and, uh, and then we will go, I will go look at the pit in about 10 or 15 minutes after I put in the attendance. I'm going to just sit here and do the attendance right now. If y'all have any questions, feel free to ask me while I'm sitting there. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Um, barbecue beans, barbecue sauce, ribs smoking, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, rib smoking and the chicken smoking. I was going to do the pork. Uh, I've just got to leave uh, early today. Uh, so, do what? Yeah, and I was going to do that. I'm going to get uh, get one of the other instructors to throw it on, and, and I'll finish it tomorrow morning. Um, but that's it. I, I've just got to leave early today. Can you say it again? Uh, I'm going to probably do it for at least an hour or two and then try to finish it up in the oven. So would you only do that for like the size that you have or would you do that for all? Not if I, if I had time, I would do it for about two, three hours. Uh, I would say about three hours and then you could wrap them, wrap them up with aluminum foil and let them sit uh, in, the, in the smoker for a little longer. Uh, just kind of in, instead of putting it in the oven, if you wrap it and put it in the uh, in the smoker, you it's like doing it in the oven. But uh, but it, at least it'll uh, kind of cook it and get it nice and it's not going to be as tender as I really want it to be because yeah because the time frame that I'm at right now. So. Yeah. Are they already pickled? I just pickled them. I, so, yeah, it's a quick pickle. Uh, I, I did a hot, hot pickling. Uh, so where I put it in when it was hot and then uh, so where it'll quickly pickle it because I want it for tomorrow. Uh, so I heated up the vinegar, a water, sugar, pickling spice, granulated garlic, granulated uh, onion, salt, and black pepper. And and heated it up, and then poured it over the uh, poured it over, and just let it sit. And then uh, it'll be ready for tomorrow. Uh, if I if I did it raw and and uh, our cold kind of a cold pickle type of deal, uh, it'd just take a little longer uh, for it to be softer and to impart flavor. So. I did more of a hot pickling, uh, just pour the, the hot product over it and just let it sit. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, and then I've got my barbecue sauce and then the beans back there. Chef, I have a question for you. Yes, of course. What's up? Um, I need to make up yesterday's uh, the Kahlua pork and everything because my water still yeah. wasn't turned on. Um, yeah. I can't find the recordings on the. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yesterday and yesterday when when I got kicked off, uh, I or I had technical difficulties, so I got kicked off and it stopped recording. So it only had 15 minutes of recording. So I'm going to have to, uh, um, I will try to find an old recording uh, of doing it and I will place it on there. But um, I, I'm sorry, it was technical issue yesterday. That's okay. Uh, I just was wondering if there's a certain link to where the- No, I mean, it will be put in the uh, in the days. I'll show you where they're located. But uh, yesterday, I, I was getting kicked off, and then it never recorded. I couldn't. I only recorded fifteen minutes of the class, and then it stopped. Uh, so um, I apologize on that. That okay. was my bad. Uh, but I will uh, try to find an old recording that I can uh, try to uh, put out for you.
All right, well, I will go check on uh, the pit. I will get my phone and actually show you all that large piece of evidence is discussing.
All right, I am back. Wait a Oh. Um. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so here's my beans right there. You can see the beans are back up. And here's my barbecue sauce right here. Sorry, we can't see it. Um, oh. Um, I, I have a different, uh, if you can, hold on. I'm logged in under uh, twice. If you can, uh, Try to find. Here, let me see if I can. I can see it now. So I'm going to go out to the, the barbecue pit and show you that. So this is the outside. You can see eventually uh, with all the cold weather, we had to remove all our uh, garden and all of that. So we're going to replant all our garden. And here am I at our pit. So you can see the chicken right here getting some color. The ribs are right there. I'm going to just baste these ribs. I've got basically just vinegar, water. Uh, you can do a little bit of apple cider vinegar. You could do apple cider. Uh, there are the ribs right there. I'm gonna flip it over to this side. There, you can see the barbecue chicken. The chicken's getting, getting cooked, getting brown. I kind of move it over a little bit just because uh, it was uh, sitting a little or starting to brown a little too much on one side. So just move that around. Actually, let's get it over here. And there we have the ribs are still going. And the I put their, the other people's chicken and ribs on the, the far end because I wanted those to go uh, a lot slower because their class isn't in, until later. So that is it. I will go back inside and it's kind of a waiting game again. I'm gonna probably take my ribs. Actually, I'm gonna probably go get some aluminum foil and I'm gonna wrap my ribs up 
in aluminum foil so where so where then uh i can uh it can kind of steam because i don't want too much smoke um i do want some smoke but i i do want it to or not steam but it'll kind of cook like it's in the oven if i wrap it with uh aluminum foil if you have butcher paper uh butcher paper works great uh all of that but again my ribs are probably not going to be as tender as i want them just because of the time frame um but that is it All right, I am back. I'm gonna go get aluminum foil and I'm gonna wrap up my uh, rib in aluminum foil. And to where then they can kind of cook longer in there, but they're not going to get too smoked. And I would do butcher paper. The only problem is I'm not really outside uh, with it. If I did butcher paper, I want to be able to uh, be there and watch it a little bit more closely because I did. I you know if an amber falls off or flies in, it could catch my butcher paper on fire or whatever else. I've just got to be very careful. It's kind of windy out there, and especially this morning uh, where you know, some of those ambers are kind of uh, flying a little bit. But uh, I've got my aluminum foil. I'm going to just take my uh, my rib and I will uh, basically just rub it, or just wrap it up and then just let it sit in the, the pit for longer. Uh, but before I wrap it, You know, and that is a personal preference. It's up to you if you want to do that. Um, you know, so, some people don't like to put the barbecue sauce on on it uh, when it's cooking, but um, you know, I, I'm okay with that. And there's different purists. People, other chefs like it a different way, or other barbecue chefs like it a different way. All right, so I will be right back. I'm going to wrap up my uh, ribs and uh, then we'll, we'll kind of, again, a waiting game. All right, be back in a minute. You're right, I'll step outside for like a few you need, man, for sure. Anything you need. And I'm kind of in a holding pattern right now.
I, so I wrapped up my chicken. All right, I'm sorry, I wrapped up my rib uh, with aluminum foil and put it up them in the smoker. And I will pull those out uh, right before I need them. Thinking about, I'm gonna let them rest for about you know, 10, 15 minutes before I plate it up. And my chicken, is going. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it completely on the, the pit, but if if you are not doing it on the pit, if you don't have a pit, you could just uh, do the brine and you can just roast it in the oven, just like you're roasting your chicken. You could just do it like that. That would work just fine. And again, I'm on a holding pattern. You know, I'm, I'm kind of waiting until, until my chicken, I can finish my chicken in the oven, um, but I'm gonna kind of wait. It's about nine, it's almost nine o'clock. So I'm gonna probably get my chicken and my ribs in the oven or in a red, regular oven, maybe in a little bit. But I'm just kind of buying, buying my time right now. I'm just kind of waiting until everything is done. So my coleslaw is ready. My, you name it, everything is ready. It's just I'm waiting on the two proteins right now. So I'm just kind of cleaning up my station, going to clean up my area to where all I have is just whatever I need. All I need is really a, one knife out to cut the ribs, maybe a spoon or two. Put up my pickles, jalapeno. Any questions so far? Anybody have any questions? 
Yes, sir. Right, so I'm just trying to get myself all organized. So I've got everything ready. Yeah. Just kind of getting myself cleaned up. If I've got any dirty dishes, I'm getting them put to the sink. Just kind of saving yourself up. Everything's about putting out everything at once. So making sure that everything is ready to put out at I'm going to put my pickled Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Pickled jalapenos up. And I'm going to go put my pickle. Jalapenos up now. Be right back.
So to speed up the process of the chicken, I'm gonna go take it out, go get it, take it out of the smoker, and I'm gonna finish it in the oven. Uh, so where we can serve it well and Offline, I'm going to go off and go get the chicken and bring it inside. I'll be right back. So y'all can see, here's my chicken right here. You can still, you, it, it is still kind of raw. Uh, you can see, or it's not completely raw, but it still needs to be cooked. Uh, so I'm gonna finish this in the oven. So I'm gonna put this in the oven, 350 degrees. Three hundred fifty degrees until internal temp reads one hundred and sixty-five degrees. Got to read one hundred sixty-five. If not, your uh, it uh, could have salmon out. I'm gonna. I've got my thermometer. I'm gonna get uh, the ribs are in the smoker still, but they're wrapped up. So again, waiting game. Got my beans, barbecue sauce, coleslaw ready, and my ribs are waiting uh, and my are in the oven and my chicken is in the oven as well. Uh, or my, I'm sorry, the ribs are in the smoker and the chicken is in the oven. 350 degrees uh, until, until it's done. And done is 165.
a giant drop the pepper. I've got a giant drop the pepper off the card. Come on. Come on. We got sodas out the star if you want. So. Everybody good? Everybody good? Yes. Again, waiting game. Yeah, we're good. Hurry up and wait. So I moved the ribs inside to the oven and, uh, and just so, and now it's kind of a waiting game. So I'm gonna probably pull it out, pull the ribs out, you know, right before 10 o'clock and the chicken should be ready right before 10 o'clock and gonna kind of plate up right then and there and be done with it. Um, so I'm gonna find a plate, I need to wash my hands, find a plate, get it warm, find a spot, uh, maybe a bowl or something that I can put my coleslaw on because we want to, we don't want a warm plate.
I will check the temperature of the tool in front of y'all. Here's my chicken right there. Slide it into the thickest portion. Temperature should be 165 degrees from 120 right now. That'll be fine. I'll, I'll uh, another 10, 12 minutes. It should be 165. Okay. And then my ribs. But see my thermometer. Okay. It was in a raw chicken, right? Because 160, uh, 120 is not cooked. So I need to take this thermometer and clean it, put it in the sanitizer and let it sit for at least 30 seconds in the sanitizer. Because if I use it for anything else, I'm recontaminating everything that I put in, put it in, because this potentially could have salmonella in it. So if I put it in something else, or um, put it in this sleeve right here. If I slide it in the sleeve without uh, cleaning it, then every time I, like, do you remember yesterday when I was checking the temp, uh, seeing about if the cake was done, I put my thermometer in there. Well, to see if, and then if I did that and it was done, I could potentially put salmonella in that cake. And that's that cross contamination issue. So you always want to be aware of that cross contamination and not cross contamination. So again, if I hurry up and wait. First guys, we take uh, a five-minute break. I'm gonna let you in the restroom, get me a uh, ice for a beverage, and I will be back in about five minutes at uh, 9:35. All right. Hard chef. So I'll be right back. Thank you guys. I'll be right back, man.
So I've got a couple of bowls right here. I'm going to put my coleslaw and I'll put my coleslaw and I'll put my uh, beans in a bowl. And remember when you when you are plating up the uh, coleslaw, we don't want a lot of that juice, right? You don't want it all too juicy. So you know, I would use tongs or something to make sure that you don't. Don't have a lot of too juicy. You know, we don't want it all too juicy. So I've got my coleslaw plated up, got some height to it, not pressed it down. Uh, if you had some green onions or something, you could, you could put that uh, in there, uh, like as a garnish. What would be awesome is we had like a uh, like nice butcher paper or something like that uh, to down on the on, on, on or on the table or on the plate to where it kind of looks like a barbecue joint. I'm going to get a little bit of barbecue sauce to the side. Waiting on my chicken and my ribs. Got my barbecue sauce in a little container. Yes, you can send me the photo. Here's that chicken. And that looks sexy. That is some sexy looking chicken. We will check the internal temp. See where I'm at. Needs about five more minutes. Let that go. 
I'm going to pull out my ribs and y'all can get to see my ribs now. I can kind of see I wrapped them. They're not as tender as I would really like it to be, but you know, it is what it is when it comes to this, but I'm gonna take these ribs off. I'm gonna, uh, you can, I'm gonna put them back on a sheet pan and I'm gonna baste them with the barbecue sauce. Or I could just leave them dry or, you know, just not baste it. And just to each their own when it comes to that. Little glaze to it. So it'll be all shiny and glistening. Smells real good. You can smell the smoke, you can smell the sweetness from the barbecue So I am just waiting. I've got everything kind of situated and ready. I need a knife to cut the ribs, uh, slice the ribs. So I'm going to need a cutting board.
when I'm going to need a cutting group, something chicken as well. Now my ribs, I, I'm going to let them sit. And uh, oops, y'all can't see. Here are my ribs right here. Okay, uh, so I'm going to let them sit for a few minutes to where they uh, can rest. I'm going to get get it off the sheet pan so that I can get the sheet pan clean. This might be a filter when it's hot. Thank you. So my ribs are sitting there just kind of resting for a few minutes. I'll slice it and I'll put it up on my plate. And then I've got my chicken. Now the, the chicken that I showed you that I brined this morning, I, I just saved that one um, and I cooked the whole chicken. Uh, but no, I didn't have a hat. Here's my chicken right here. You can hear that sizzle. Check the internal temp. Yes. All right, so my chicken is pretty much ready. I'm going to just let that sit for a second. And I'm going to slice it. But I'm going to first get some gloves on. All of this is hot food, right? So uh, you know, if you need to wear two pairs of gloves, so your hands won't be sensitive, that's totally fine. Um, but I would suggest, uh, you know, when, when you're cutting hot food, sometimes it, it is easier to wear gloves because it does protect yourself until you get used to touching warm things or a hot thing. Uh, then you, you know, your hands get used to it after a while. Okay, so here's the ribs. I'm gonna move my camera down. I'm gonna take these ribs, I'm gonna slit it. Just like so, you can see nice ribs right here. Place them on my plate. You can kind of see I've got my ribs right here. Again, they, mine are probably not going to be as tender as, as I would like them to be, just because of the time, the strength that I have uh, trying to get everything done. All right, I'm going to get my chicken out and I'm going to cut that chicken. I'm going to 
pour out the juices. There's my chicken right there. Okay, so Jeff, I like the color in the chicken. It's like the perfect brownie. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it has got a great color to it. So yes. Here is here is my plate. I'm gonna wipe down my plate here. And put the barbecue sauce right in the middle. Let me move my cutting board out of the way. There is the beans, the coleslaw, the barbecue sauce the ribs, and the chicken. Any questions on that? That looks really good. Yeah. It, it, it looks I, amazing, I, yummy. <laughs> I hope it is. I hope y'all turn out the same way. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna kind of close it out right now because uh, I got about 10 minutes. I'm gonna clean up and then I'm gonna have to head out. I, I, I'm sorry that I'm gonna have to leave uh, an hour earlier or so, uh, but tomorrow we're gonna be in Mexico. I would re read up on that, uh, Supa de Lima, uh, Limon, uh, the um, uh, green rice and uh, churros. Uh, look at that, watch, you know, just kind of read up on that. That's what we're gonna be doing. And there is the production for today. So I will be, uh, I, I will have my phone. You can call me. Uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna be waiting in line since it's uh, uh, waiting in line to get my uh, second COVID vaccination. So if you need me, please get a hold of me, whatever else, but I'm here if you need me, okay? Y'all good? Yes, Chef. Thank you so much. Rock Thank and you. roll, guys. Be safe. Be careful. You too, Chef. And, Thank you so uh, much. See you tomorrow. Yes. See you all later. Bye, 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 bye Chef. Bye. bye, everyone. That good? Okay. Now, you heard me about my ribs. They're not going to be as tender just because of the time restraint that I have. Uh, so, oh, no. Okay. That's fine. No worries, man. I, I understand that. Yeah, of course, bro. Anytime. Yeah,
And you're good? That's good. Huh? That's very good. Sure. I will have more food, hopefully, soon. Mm.